Hello and welcome to The Huddle. Liam Santamaria back with you. Yes, I'm back. Back from Summer League. Uh, took a little week off, went up to far north Queensland and uh, now well and truly back at it. And uh, there's been a bit going on. Import signings popping off left and right. And um, I'll tell you, the biggest, two of the biggest stories of the NBL offseason have been the Adelaide 36ers and the Boomers. So it only makes sense that we get the captain of those two squads on for a chat. So up next will be Mitch McCarron. We're going to talk through everything that's been going on over recent times. So sit back, relax. Up next, Mitch McCarron. Macca, good to see you, mate. You were mic'd up in Jakarta. Now you're mic'd up here again today. What's happening? How's it going, Liam? Yeah, no, happy to be back on Aussie soil. Good man, good man. Excuse the voice. I'm um, I'm soldiering on with Codrill over here. <laughs> no problem. How about you? Are you uh, are you tired? The, the the long trip back. It's been a busy few weeks. Yeah, it's been a it's been a, a crazier month than probably expected after we finished season. Um, I mean, it's a good opportunity, obviously, for everyone. But yeah, I think everyone's a little tired. Everyone was a little bit sick at one point, just traveling around and, and dealing with all the bugs floating around in the world right now. So yeah, no, but everything's all good. Ooh, all the bugs? Everyone's sick. <laughs> I, I, like everyone in in Brisbane, I go to basketball. And I feel like forty percent of the kids are sick, and yeah. everyone's out. It's just it's just what it is. Yeah, it's rough. Um, hey mate, congrats, congrats on the the Asia Cup um, undefeated run for the Boomers over these last few weeks. The Asia Cup specifically, though, like um, looked like it was a super fun experience. Yeah, it was amazing. Um, it, it was obviously a very different group to five years ago. Um, just in terms of probably the the average age or the youth in our group and um, some guys getting their first chance to play for Australia. Um, some other guys who maybe had a very different role and, uh, you know, Thon Maker's coming back and now he's the main piece we're kind of going to offensively. And um, yeah, it, it was a really cool experience. Everyone bought in right away, which is exactly what you want in a national team. And when you go into a tournament like that, you just, you just never know who you're playing kind of thing. You don't know what Saudi Arabia are going to be like. You don't know um who what's going to come at you next so everyone handled everything great um you talk about the age of the squad oh, old man mccarran how did you enjoy I that i know it was weird everyone was, everyone kept calling me oh you're the veteran you're the veteran i'm like i'm 30 like not 35 but um <laughs> no, that's kind of what it was i guess and especially once clint went down um in terms of being on floor i think i might yeah. have been the oldest uh which was a bit weird but yeah it was also cool just to uh, um, be the one that has to try and up my energy to keep it around the young guys you're talking there about not knowing like what each team was going to bring necessarily did you get a little nervous down the stretch of that fourth quarter uh we had a few games where we got a little bit nervous japan they started to really get hot in the fourth and we made a, a bit of a bad habit of that where it was kind of like we built a lead and then it's international basketball. Guys just kind of throw everything at you um, and they started making shots. They get confident. And um, yeah, I guess even in the, in the final, it was kind of, we felt comfortable and I, I remained calm because, you know, I had trust in the group that we could get stops when we needed to, but man, some teams were making some tough shots. Oh man. Long time guys that are older than you, like me, will remember like um, in the mid noughties, a, uh, a, a collapse against Greece. I think it was in a world a world championships that was just that kind of was harrowing for us we've had those like traumatic fourth quarter late game experiences with the boomers over the journey um, at the olympics and world cup i had sort of shades of that going on in that fourth quarter when it was like 15 or 16 and then it was two one point in it um and then the missed free throw at the end i imagine when the final buzzer went there was just a pretty nice moment of relief yeah, it was great. Um, again, it was kind of like it was a credit to the group and, and a credit to the coaching staff who kind of didn't freak out when teams went a run. It could have been easy to have a little implosion and everyone start going, I'm just going to do this myself. We didn't really have that in the group. Um, we could have done some things better, but I think at the same time, it allowed us to lock in, get a quick huddle and go, hey, one stop here and it's out, you know, like, and the game's done, you know, okay, regardless of what's happened in the last few minutes, let's just get this back on track. So, um, yeah, it was a crazy last two minutes, but we got the win and, and that's what matters. You're talking before about um, like the, the selflessness kind of clicking quickly into this group. I mean, we've, we always talk about the boomers culture. 
I bumped into Jacob Holmes briefly the other day. He said that there was a conversation. He yeah, that, that, that there was a conversation with you guys in advance of maybe the World Cup qualifiers when you guys all first kind of started getting together. I mean, how, what was the process of getting that kind of buy-in so quickly with a group like that? Yeah, I think it's um, obviously it probably starts at the top. Um, you know, with BA and, and Gorge and the assistant coaches, um, everyone was kind of talking about like, this is how we want to play. And this is what, how we had success. You know, this is how we got a bronze medal. This is how we can get a gold medal in the future. Um, it's playing the right way. It's playing for each other. And because we did have so many guys who were new playing for Australia, um, we didn't exactly know what role we wanted from everybody yet. You know, we, we brought so many different guys who haven't played before. It was like, well, what do you want from me going into camp? Uh, so it was cool to just see everyone just go, just tell me what you need from me. You know, I didn't see anyone over the course of whether it was in Melbourne or Jakarta, uh, go, oh, that's not really what I want to do. Or that's not really me. Everyone was just like, yep, cool. That's what we're supposed to do. This is what we're running. This is what we're doing defensively. So, um, I think that kind of pride, um, in how you play for your NBL team, you know, what you're used to doing and everyone kind of put that aside, just bought in and said, yeah, I just want to win. And ultimately, that's what it comes down to. I think everybody knows that that's what playing for Australia is about, just winning the game. And it's, it's so perfectly aligns with how you want to play and how you love to play. You know I love your game and the way you go about it, but just that, that willingness and desire to make the extra pass. And it looked like, and I've talked about this on broadcast sometimes, when you are having fun out on the floor, it's a beautiful thing to watch. And over the course of the Asia Cup, like, man, there were, there were more lookaways than a white chocolate mixtape coming out of your hands. I mean, it looked like you were just having a good time balling out there. Yeah, I really was. Um, I definitely throw too many no-look passes, but um, yeah, that's it. Like, I'm enjoying it, um, being free. And I, I think the group, um, you know, we almost had a bit of that problem at one point where it was like, are we taking the right one early? Because it was like everyone wanted to throw the extra one. Everyone wanted, you know um but at the same time that's a good problem to have you know we, once we got our spacing right we were running some not too many actions it was just kind of we just want to play let you guys make reads and mike kelly and the coaching staff were big on that you know we don't want to just put in heavy structure we want to let you guys make reads and make plays as the tournament goes on so we got better and better and it looked to me from and i noticed this in the first half of the first world cup qualifier game against china it looks to me like you're coming in to the next sort of phase of your career, this, this off season, this upcoming season, determined to make that problem of, am I, am I making too, am I throwing too many passes? Am I turning down shots? No longer an issue. You were like stepping in, looking to shoot, looking to let it fly. You've obviously been getting a lot of reps up last season. Looked like maybe you were kind of, trying to work out when was the right time to shoot, when was the right time to pass. And as a result, it ended up being a, you know, a career low three point shooting percentage for you. Is, is that the mindset you're coming in? You know what? Like I'm stepping in and shooting this thing this season. Yeah, definitely. Um, I won't name drop, but I had a, a few conversations with a few people that, you know, I, I, I trust. Um, and I think they were kind of talking about some head coaches, some mentors and kind of just talking about, you know, what, what was the mindset last year in terms of, you know, and I really wanted to run the team. I, I wanted us to be better offensively. I wanted us to move the ball and cut right and space right. And it got to a point mid year where, and this is my fault. It's, I'm not putting this on anyone else. It, I was focusing too much on that. You know, it was like, I'm worrying about what everyone else is doing. Like I, at the end of the day, like if you're doing your job, it's, it's on everyone else to, to do the same. So um, it definitely took away from just being ready to score. I think. And in terms of three point shooting, it was much lower than I want it to be than it needs to be. Um, and that's just being ready to score. I think just being ready to catch and shoot, being ready to come off the ball screen. I'm open, let it go. So I know I'm going to play the right way. I'm not going to take too many bad shots over the course of the year. So um, I think being aggressive is a good thing for me and it'll be a good thing for the team. So definitely motivated to, to attack the basket a lot more and, and let them fly this year. But we've got some guys around that I need to get the ball to as well. Well, that's, that's for sure. And, you know, like that element, how you're going to approach it is just kind of like one of the things for Adelaide fans to get excited about this season. And we'll talk about all of that in a second. But just staying with the Boomers vibe for a moment, um, another guy who who had, took, has been taking that approach in recent times, I'm stepping in, I'm shooting this thing, I'm going to let it fly, is Jack White. 
And in that fourth quarter of that third game against China, he went berserk. You guys went berserk. How much of a, of an enjoyable experience was that fourth term? Yeah, it was awesome. Um, games like that, and you know, like they're a grind. It's super physical. Um, you get nothing easy. Um, both teams kind of feel like they can get on top, but neither one is. Um, and when that starts to break open, that feeling is just like, there's nothing like it. Like that kind of win where it's like grind, 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 and then it breaks. Mm -hmm. um, and you did the right thing. You played defense. And Whitey is like the epitome of that. He's just all effort um on both ends of the floor um and i know he was frustrated because he missed a few shots in the first couple of games that he thought i should make that i'm open um and everyone was just getting around him and saying shoot it man that's your shot we want you to shoot that ball um so to see them go in and him get hot in the fourth quarter it was awesome for him and then obviously what's happened since then has been great yeah i mean former teammate of yours of course at melbourne united i mean how much did you enjoy watching him do what he did at summer league and now he's a two-way guy for the nuggets yeah, I mean, it feels like it's just like about time kind of thing. Um, obviously, the injury was a setback for him and he used that as motivation. Um, incredibly hardworking guy, but just so happy for him. I'm sure everybody is. Uh, he belongs there. Uh, he's got the athleticism. He's got the IQ. He's got the effort and the heart. So he belongs there for sure. Um, you played in the green and gold recently with a bunch of guys that maybe you'd never played with before. No. You know, like, um, I think probably more than half the roster you'd never been playing with before. Who out of those guys did you, and, and don't, just, don't just say all of them because that's the easy response. Pick one or two that you, you were like, you know what? Like, I enjoy playing with this dude. Like, he always just seems to be in the spot, in the corner when I'm stuck on the baseline and um, you just kind of started vibing with a little bit. Yeah, uh, it's tough because we did rotate a lot of bodies um, and put guys in different spots. And um, I enjoyed playing with Will McDowell White, kind of going on the one two kind of combo guard. Didn't matter who brought it up, didn't matter who ran. Um, and I thought he really lifted his level and showed what he could do. Uh, I enjoyed, I've never played with Reese Vague before. Um, and he was lights out, especially in the early part of the tournament. It was just running these little ghost screens with him as, and yeah, that was fun. Um, Tyrus Proctor was great. Uh, I mean, we knew he was talented, you know, he's young, um, but just when things got tough, he could just go get a bucket. He could just go make a play um, and he's going to have such a great career. Um, and then obviously Thon was super dominant. Um, I got to go with him to Japan and Philippines, but didn't share the court a lot with him in that tour. Um, so this tournament, I got to actually work with him a lot. Um, everyone really was uh like a blast to play with but yeah probably those guys and especially just getting to know thon a bit better as a player was cool up close and personal with tyrese proctor i mean a lot of basketball fans um who haven't watched a lot of him know that he's going to duke know that he has a bright future ahead of him but what can what kind of inside word can you give us about him as a prospect uh, I think he, yeah, I mean, obviously I'd watched him a lot coming in um, in all the NBL one kind of challenge game stuff. Um, so I, we knew what he could do, but uh, it was just cool to see him apply that and adjust to kind of camp in Melbourne, um, which shows me that he's a quick learner. He listens, um, he can adjust his game. He's pretty versatile. You want me to play faster? You want me to play slower? Um, he bought in right away. Uh, which tells me he's going to do great in terms of that new environment at college and being a pro. Um, he was able to just pick things up really quickly. Um, and he wants to have conversations, which I thought is a really good, you know, he wasn't about, oh, I'm this, I'm meant to be this, which is easy to fall into, I think, for a guy that's got that ahead of him in terms of, you know, attention. Um, he wants to have conversations. He wanted to be that energy and the you know, joker in the group as well. So um, I really enjoyed his energy at the, at the tournament. And you mentioned like Will McDowell White specifically. I don't know. I get the feeling like he's in for a big season with the breakers. You know, they've structured their roster a little differently this time. He doesn't have all these Websters or import guards kind of around him. Motti Mayor is a massive fan. I mean, yeah. you see him as a breakout candidate coming into this season. Yeah, I do. Um, I think it's time. I think he knows that as well, that, you know, he feels probably a little bit, I don't know whether held back is the right term, but um, he definitely feels like he's got more to show and more to give. I mean, we we caught the full force of that in Adelaide 
<laughs> one game where you've got like 25 in the first half. Like yeah. that, that's a confident will making plays. That's the will that I know from Brisbane, the kid that was growing up there, everyone was fascinated about and would go watch to play. So um, yeah, I, I think he's going to have a big year. Um, you Let's talk now about the 36ers because you guys have been on the tip of everybody's tongue this off season. Just went bang, bang, Antonius Cleveland and Robert Franks. It gets, I get the feeling Grant, specifically CJ, there was like a, maybe a, a focus going into the off season of saying, you know what, it's time to get some imports that are proven in the yep. NBL. We know are going to turn up and can get things done in this league. Is that, is that the sense you get? And what, where, where's your head at in terms of those couple of signings? Yeah, very much. So I think it was, um, you know, I need to know what I'm working with. I, I think they knew that uh, the off season we would have again, like, how much time do we have in terms of preparation? Are we going to be able to get guys in? Um, you know, are we going to be losing? I think we had six, maybe more guys that were off contract. What's going to happen there? So I know definitely in the import spots, they were like, we need to know what we're getting here. Um, and can they do well in this league? So that was a big drawing card for sure for those two guys. And they were studs at the end of the day. So, mm -hmm. you know, they're going to be great for us. Uh, what about, I mean, you, Sunday, AC coming off defensive player of the year. I mean, that's a lockdown unit on the perimeter. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm excited. Um, hopefully we can get up the floor a little bit this year, um, pressure some teams. And I know that probably let us down last year. We just didn't generate offense out of defense last year at all. We struggled to keep pace in the game. Um, that's how I want to play. It's how Sunday wants to play. I'm sure that's how AC wants to play. So um, that'll be really good for us. And then we've got guys like Drimmick coming in off the bench who's going to bring yeah. a lot of energy as well. So um, we've got a lot of guys who are going to be ready to play and, and lock in on both ends. And, and a couple of more pieces to come in as well. I love, did you see the, uh, the article that went up on the, the Adelaide 36's website last week? saying who's in the mix. It was like just a, like a name drop session of, of big guys, Travis Trice and Josh yep. Adams and Bainesy, I think was in there at one point. But um, I mean, it looks like as an organization, you guys are going for it. Yeah, I, I believe that's definitely the direction. Um, you know, I, I think they've been probably disappointed in the last couple of years and, you know, you can find reasons or excuses. And at the end of the day, we, we didn't get to where we needed to get to. Um, and I know there's a lot of people involved in the club, whether it's front office, coaching staff, players that, you know, we want to be back up there. We want to be one of the top teams, want to be competing for championships. So um, yeah, no more excuses. Two years ago, you were at this point in the middle of an off season, heading towards an upcoming season with a team that was very exciting. And Jock Landau was going out there saying, I think we might go undefeated. <laughs> and people around Melbourne United were saying, Jock, just, you know, just chill a little. But he was doubling down every chance he got. Every time a microphone was put in front of him, he said, look, I don't see why we should think we might lose any game. Yeah. Um, credit to him. You guys went on to win the championship. You're a dominant force. In Vegas, Robo uh, said it's championship or bust for us this season. Uh, AC kind of doubled down on that. The quote from DJ on online today is we're stacked at all positions. I mean, are you embracing that kind of level of self-expectations? Uh, yeah, I think uh, obviously you need some things to go your way uh, to win a championship. Um, you need health. Uh, you need, you know, sometimes you just got to make a shot at the right time. You, you know, that there's a lot of things that need to go your way, but at the same time, I, I like the, the motivation from the group. I like that the guys are ready. Um, you know, we know what's ahead. And, and I guess that's to the point before, like having a couple guys in the import slot that know what this league is like, that you don't take nights off if you want to be up there in number one. Um, you know, every team will beat you if you don't play well. So, um, I think we've got a group that is going to go in in the right headspace. And yeah, we're definitely looking at it um, from, a, from a perspective of that if we're not in the finals and, and we're not competing for a championship, it, it, it was, was not a successful year. What um, these last couple of pieces, a big, a guard, uh, what, what sort of elements or skill sets do you think? And I know it's not you, know, you that's recruiting here, but I'm sure CJ chats to you from time to time about this, this process. What, what do you think? you'd like to see in, in those guys that are going to come in in these last couple of spots? Uh, yeah, we probably need uh, another guy who can handle the ball a little bit. 
Um, you know, in this league, it's really hard to just have one ball dominant guard on the floor. You know, teams get after you and they take that away. So um, I, I think we're going to need someone who can help make plays off the dribble. Um, you know, we talked about what we can do defensively, but yeah, another offensive guy that maybe he can create his own, maybe he's great at creating for others, be to press. Um, I think that's going to help us. Um, and then we're probably looking for, I'm not sure if the five spots locked up yet. Um, maybe another big man there, uh, depending how CJ wants to go with that. So someone who can, can protect the paint. I think that's another thing we struggled to do last year consistently is just protect the rim at times. And that was in part the guard's fault getting blown by, but also just our bigs just being in good positions and having a defensive chemistry. Is your understanding the um, Soto's coming back? Is that what you, you believe? Uh, I am of the understanding he was. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm not in town right now, so I haven't seen him. <laughs> You're in Brisbane? I am, I am. Yeah, so obviously born in the territory, but grew up in Brisbane. Um, man, the Bulls just on Aaron Baines. They did. What's your take on that? Yeah, it's awesome. Um, you know, I, I mean, I would have loved for Baines to come down and have a run with us, but uh, <laughs> at the same time, it's, it's great to see him back playing. It's great to have him in the league. Um, I mean, he's going to be a force uh so yeah i feel sorry for some of the bigs that have to bang with him but uh you know it's great to have him back and some of the guards are gonna have to fight over his picks yeah i might go under on them yeah <laughs> um or those no switch yeah no, no, no switch. that's not gonna work no, no hey to finish off man i mentioned born in the territory the blitz is going up to darwin the salties have been in nbl one this season we know look hey look we saw the blitz go to um tasmania a couple of seasons ago, look, a couple of years later, the Jack Jumpers are in the league. Um, you, you excited about going back to the territory for the preseason and and what looks to be a, some serious growth in basketball in the territory in recent times? Yeah, 100%. Um, I haven't been back since I left, which was, I think I was three years old when my family left Alice Springs. So I'm keen to get back to, to the Northern Territory. I think Darwin's going to be awesome. Um, yeah, as you said, the, there's a lot of interest and seems like a really fun time when the Salties play. I, did, I didn't get that road trip this year, but it seems like teams have talked about there's a good buzz and the games are fun and people are really into it. So I'm hoping they pack out the Blitz as well. And yeah, hopefully we can set something up for the future. And in this next little bit between now and, and preseason, back with the, the Northside Wizards or a little rest? Um, yep, no, a couple, <laughs> no rest. Uh, a couple <laughs> double headers this weekend and then uh, back to Adelaide to start preseason. And then we'll see from there. We've got to make the finals first. How are you enjoying Northside? Yeah, it's been fun. Um, we haven't been able to keep our. Uh, <laughs> I should say best group, but we haven't had everybody there. You know, Keanu, Drimic, Kevin White, Luol Ding, myself, um, you know, was the goal. And then we've got a lot of other guys, some younger guys to give us some depth. But um, just because of the Australian games, injury, illness, I think we haven't played a game with everybody. So, yeah, it's going to be, I think that might be tonight for the first time, which is going to be sweet. Nice squad. Yeah, yeah, we should, we should be okay. Nice. All right. Awesome, man. Great to catch up with you. Congrats on everything that you've done over the, the last little bit and um, all the best for the upcoming season. Excited to watch you guys go at it. Thanks very much. Can't wait. Cheers, man.